Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our evening Vesper service here at Community Presbyterian Church. I'm Tim Hebner. I am the director of music at, uh, at Community Presbyterian, and I will be leading tonight's service of worship. Tonight, as we gather outside in the beautiful outdoors, we will explore the presence of the four classical elements, earth, water, air, and fire, as symbols in scripture and worship. These four elements figure prominently in many ancient cultures throughout the world. We see them referenced in the world's religions, in their traditions, in many countless ways. And religious ceremonies, rituals, and holy writings present these elements over and over as divine symbols. Throughout our, throughout our own Bible, earth, air, water, and fire are often referenced as symbols of God's covenant, of life, death, and renewal, of purification, and of the presence and movement of the Holy Spirit among us. Tonight, I will be reading from various passages of scripture that reference these elements, and all of our songs and prayers will focus on some aspect of each of them as reminders of God's love for us. Please hear our call to worship. Creator God, who lifted up the mountains and formed the dry land, whose hands have shaped us out of the dust of the earth, who has formed the soils and made this world a place of beauty and abundance, we give you thanks for the gift of the earth. Creator God, who set the stars in their places and directs the course of the planets, who has robed this earth with a thin garment of air, making it a haven of beauty and life, who has breathed into each of us the breath of life. We thank you for the gift of air. Creator God, whose spirit moved over the faces of the waters, who gathered the sea into their places and directs the course of the rivers, who sends rain upon the earth that it should bring forth life. We praise you for the gift of water. Creator God, source of all light, who spoke to Moses from the burning bush, who made the sun to warm our planet, who provides the heat to bake our bread and cook our food, and whose Holy Spirit descended to earth as tongues of flame. We are grateful to you for the gift of fire. Be with us now at this holy gathering. Help us to feel your presence and to know your will for us through our meditation upon these symbols of earth, air, water, and fire. the 
joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. For Thyself, best gift divine, to the world so freely given, for that great, great love of Thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. We will begin with a reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plant bearing seeds according to their own kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. the sculptor of the mountains, God the miller of the sand, God the jeweler of the heavens, God the potter of the land, you are womb of all creation. We are formless, shape us now. God, the nuisance of the Pharaoh. God, the cleaver of the sea. God, the pillar in the darkness. God, the beacon of the free. You are found of all deliverance. 
hearts. We are aimless, lead us now. God, the dresser of the vineyard, God, the planter of the wheat, God, the reaper of the harvest, God, the source of all we eat. You are healer and host at every table. We are hungry, feed us now. Let us pray. Thank you for the ground beneath our feet, your good earth that gives life to all. In a mystery we don't understand, green plants spring forth from your darkness. Canyons and mountains, plains and deserts show us your infinite imagination. We thank you for this firm foundation on which to build our homes and our lives. May we always love this land as you love it. May we care for this good earth that gives us such a good life. Amen. As the wind song through the trees, as the stirrings of the breeze, so it is with the Spirit of God. As the heart made strangely warm, and the voice within the storm, so it is with the Spirit of God. Never soon, never known, wake the wind is blown, bringing life, bringing power to the world. As the dancing tongues of fire, as the soul's most deep desire, so it is with the Spirit of God. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. In the following scripture passage, the translator uses the word breath several times. However, the Hebrew of this word uh, can also mean wind or spirit. This is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very, very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. 
Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of air, for cool breezes and brisk winds that refresh us, for blue skies and crystal clear nights, for the smells of every season, summer and winter, spring and fall. Most of all, we thank you for the air that gives us life. You offer your spirit to us with every breath we take. May we protect this gift that gives us life. Amen. like a river I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river in my soul I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river in my soul 
I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King. Heirs of salvation, trusting for promise, faithfully now God's praises we sing. Baptized in water, Sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King. One with his rising, freedom to give, and thankfully now God's praises we sing. Baptized in water sealed by the Spirit, marked with the sign of Christ our King. Born of the Spirit, we are God's children. Joyfully now God's praises we sing. Let us pray. Thanks be for water that sustains the life of animals, fish, and plants, that cleans our bodies and blesses our souls, for the water of tears that wash away our grief, for the water of slides, lakes, pools, and oceans where we can play and have fun. Thanks be for water. Your water gives us new life. May we treasure that gift and share it with others.
out this soul of mine and visit it with your own ardor glowing. O Comforter, draw near within my heart appear and kindle it your holy flame bestowing. And as the yearning strong with which our soul will long shall forth the past the present falling tolling. For some guess God's grace till love create a place wherein the Holy Spirit makes a dwelling. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 39. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Judea, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God's gonna set this world on fire. God's gonna set this world on fire one of these days. Hallelujah. God's gonna set this world on fire. God's gonna set this world on fire one of these days. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm gonna eat and never be hungry. I'm gonna eat and never be hungry one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna eat and never be hungry. I'm gonna eat and never be hungry one of these days. I'm gonna drink and never be thirsty. I'm gonna drink and never be thirsty one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna drink and never be thirsty. I'm gonna drink and never be thirsty one of these days. God's gonna set the world on fire. God's
God's gonna set the world on fire one of these days, hallelujah. God's gonna set this world on fire. God's gonna set this world on fire one of these days. Let us pray. Thank you for fire and the many ways we can use it to cook our food, to sterilize and purify, to smelt ore and form metal, to warm our homes and our bodies, and to shine a light on the darkness that surrounds us. You light our way and enlighten our minds. May we be open to the fire of your spirit. Before the final benediction, I know it's getting late and getting dark, so I just have a couple of quick announcements. Um, thank you all so much for being here tonight. It's really, really nice to see you all. Um, a couple of important things. Um, Donna is away. Um, she has she goes on a planning retreat about this time every year, and uh, so she was headed to the beach, and uh, she sent an email, and some of you might have already seen it, but she was involved in a car accident a couple of days ago. She's fine. She was in a rental car. And, uh, and, and I thought one of the funniest things about the email, she said, I'm so glad I bought the insurance for the rental car <laughs> because they took care of everything. So she's fine, maybe a little sore, but she's at a retreat and she will be back next week. Um, this Sunday, we'll have our, our normal service. Um, I'll be playing a prelude starting at 945. My prelude tonight was Air from Water Music, in case you didn't pick up on that um, little pun. And uh, for my prelude on Sunday, I'll be actually be doing more of water music. Um, as far as these Friday Vesper services, um, the plan for now is to continue having them until the weather doesn't allow us to do it anymore. So we expect we'll be here next, uh, next Friday. Um, that's not for absolute certain, so just check the website for details. Um, but hopefully we'll all be here and it'll be just as gorgeous next Friday as well. All right. Um, I think that's it. So, one final benediction. May the firmness of the earth be yours. May the freedom of the air be yours. May the flow of the water be yours. May the fierceness of the fire be yours. May all the gifts of this life, from below and from above, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. One last song if you're up for it. <laughs> Not your typical liturgical music here. There we go.
Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight. <laughs>